Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides that auto advance every 15 seconds. Over the last year, subversive elements within my immune system attempted a mutiny and attempted to take control over my body. This is part of the story of how I, the rightful captain of my body, crushed the rebellion. <laughs> the story begins last May, or actually May of 2009. After a week of abdominal pain, my wife took me to the hospital. And after five hours of testing and poking and prodding, I received the following words of advice. Your spleen is enlarged, no contact sports. <laughs> I also received the advice that I should schedule a consultation with the Department of Hematology and Oncology. And being a learned man of the internet, I knew that hematology meant the study of blood and oncology the study of cancer. To really understand what was going on in my head at this point, you have to think about what a young child would think. Say you have a young child and they're in bed and the room is dark and they hear a noise, an unfamiliar noise. Their imagination goes wild. Is it a monster? Is it, is it Daleks? Is it, you know, the, the boogeyman coming to get me? But you turn on the lights, you let them see the detail in the room, what's actually in there. And oh, it's just an adorable kitten. Maybe it knocked a book off of a shelf, who knows. But everybody's happy, the kitten is furry, and there's nothing to be afraid of. For me, that unfamiliar noise was the word cancer. And so my mind starts running wild. My imagination, my fears are unbounded. And as we started doing more testing, we started taking samples, we were able to turn the lights on a little bit more in the room. We didn't find a kitten. We found lymphoma, which is a cancer of the immune system. And further research and tissue sampling and biopsying, we found out it was a little bit more complex. Not just one lymphoma, there were actually two different kinds of lymphoma. Yes, double lymphoma. <laughs> so now we knew what it was, and I wanted to know why. And to know why, you have to look at how cells operate. You have to look at their life cycle. They spend most of their time relaxing, chilling out. And then every once in a while, they switch into the reproductive mode. They, they take a look at their DNA, their instructions for living, make sure that they're free of corruption. And if they're free of corruption, they look around and see if they're overpopulating the area. And if they're not, they make a copy of that DNA. Then they gather the resources they need, they create a physical clone of themselves, put that copy of the DNA in there, and then go back to relaxing. But Sometimes a little bit of corruption happens, and sometimes that corruption happens to the corruption detector itself. The DNA police go off duty. And then all sorts of other things can sneak through. Say, for instance, you get a little bit more corruption to the DNA, like that overpopulation check gets turned off, and then you have cancer. Then you have something that's just reproducing, and every time it reproduces, every time it creates a clone, it's putting those same flaws into that, that same duplicate. So you get these cells that overpopulate over and over. So now we know what it is, and we know why it's doing what it's doing. The next step was to figure out how we could fight this. And for lymphoma, the front line, the front line for that is usually chemotherapy. One of the types we used is called methotrexate. When the cell gets to the point where it's going to gather the resources, it looks around and it sees this methotrexate chemical in the bloodstream. It says, oh, that looks useful. Big mistake. It pulls it in, methotrexate wrecks up the place, the cell dies a quick death. Another one, cytoxin. When the DNA is being copied, it's particularly vulnerable. Cytoxin goes and kills the copy of the DNA as well as the original DNA of that cancerous cell, and the cell dies. Two different ways that we can attack it. These types of chemotherapy work really well on lymphoma because lymphoma tends to go through this reproductive cycle. It's, it hits those weak points pretty frequently. But lymphoma is not the only kind of thing that does that. You've got your digestive tract cells, your mouth lining, and hair follicles. That's why you have a lot of people going through chemotherapy that lose their hair, they get the, a shiny dome look. I myself am not quite so shiny anymore, which is nice. Uh, and so what I learned from all of this in the very beginning was that as I learned 
what I was dealing with and how we were going to fight it, we were able to limit what the, we were able to put boundaries on our fear. We were able to f learn where to focus our energy to be able to actually fight this and make a go of it. And the last year has been a big roller coaster ride for it, or for all of us. Uh, and I've been blogging all about it, and I invite you to learn more about it or read more about it at lymphomartini.com.